So for those of you who follow me on social media, you'll know that I recently trash-picked a rather nice LG LCD TV, uh, a 47-inch um, 1080p model, a mm, couple of years old, but not ancient. And it has a very common problem with this model, or I should say with that whole set family, which is a blown LED backlight. And there's a safety circuit in its uh, backlight driver that will shut it off completely if it detects a problem with either of the two strings. It has two parallel uh, voltage and current regulators uh, that each drive half the uh, backlight LEDs. So the repair is simple enough, but it's fiddly enough to get in there that I really didn't want to start working on it until I had the parts. I didn't want to just go in there and figure out what was wrong with it and then order parts and come back to it later because the panel itself is fragile and once you've got it out it's just it's an accident waiting to happen. So on eBay I found that um, besides being able to buy the sub-assemblies that the LEDs are mounted on, which are quite expensive, um, there are two flavors of sub-assembly in the set. There are uh, one sub-assembly with four and one sub-assembly with five LEDs on it. It's configured as six strips and each strip has one four and one five on it at least from a quick glance at the teardown videos that I've watched. So this particular vendor is selling the uh, LEDs bare and specifically for uh, Samsung TVs of this family. That that you see there is the lens assembly which they've removed off the uh, LED sub-assembly. It's kind of a flex PCB arrangement and they interestingly specify what the package is and it's either a 3535 or a 3537. From looking at it I think it's a 3537. Um, but anyway I didn't want to wait a month for these to arrive, although the price is right, $9.79 for 50 LEDs, that would allow me to replace all the LEDs in the set at once, almost, uh, there's 54 in there, and it would be for sure the right part and mechanically compatible. <coughs> so I went, because I didn't want to wait for a month, I went looking on Amazon uh, to see if there was anything there that I could get in a couple days, since I happen to have this weekend free, and I did find a couple of vendors selling similar LEDs, but not similar enough and also they were about six dollars each so that was just not going to happen however i did find automotive led replacement backup lights and these are uh, eight dollars for a set of two and each one of those has 15 leds on it you see there's six on this side six on the other side and there's also three on the very end uh, so this particular vendor specified also that his product had 3535 LEDs in it, which I'm like, okay, it's the right-ish package, let's get some of those, I can have them by Saturday, uh, they did in fact arrive yesterday, and maybe I'll be able to salvage them. Um, so the other interesting piece of information that's in this vendor's listing is that the original LEDs are rated at 350 milliamps and a quoted forward voltage drop of 3 volts they're possibly being driven even higher than 350 because this is a PWM um, driven system and it's quite possible that the uh, the manufacturer is overdriving the LEDs to get it to appear brighter uh, and that could also explain why it failed. I have read a lot on the internet of people recommending that uh, LED backlit sets should have the LED turned down definitely not to 100% uh, they recommend as low as you can stand it to increase the longevity of them. Because uh, it could be thermal issues, it could just simply be burning out the bond wires, any number of failure modes in an LED chip. But anyway, this wasn't happening. This arrived. But as soon as I opened this up, in fact, before I opened it up, I was looking through the package, I realized that this is a much more complicated circuit than I was expecting. What I was expecting was but this is an automotive application, so I was expecting that it would be designed to be driven off 12 or 13.8 volts, and that it would basically be um, each of these three uh, sets of three would be in series, and all of those sets of three collectively would be wired in parallel, each with its own uh, current limiting resistor directly to these terminals. And that's not the case. Uh, the circuit on here is quite a bit more complicated than that, and the reason this matters is that before I try and steam, well, melt these LEDs off the board and mount them into this complex uh, TV assembly, I really want to be sure that they're not going to burn out instantly as soon as I turn the TV on. Um, so what is on this circuit? Well, let's see if we can illuminate it a little better and perhaps zoom in.
Perfect. So what we have is this, this uh, full wave bridge rectifier right here, which uh, accounts for the fact that you don't know what the polarity of these is going to be. I didn't think of that. This inductor and this other inductor belong to this LED drive chip, which is on the other side of the board right there. And that's its uh, switch diode right there. It's a, a, a buck converter. And this is the sense resistor. And you won't be able to read that, but it's 0.33 ohms. And according to the data sheet for this regulator, which by the way is a PT4115, um, that value of sense resistor sets an output current of 300 and a bit milliamps. It's like 0.303 amp. Uh, so damn. And the reason I say damn is this. Uh, this is not a step up converter. So given that the input is 12 volts and that the drop across each of these uh, LEDs is three ish volts, there's no possible way that these could all be in series, right? They have to be, there has to be some parallel arrangement there. I measured the output voltage from this regulator, conveniently labeled plus and minus here. And it turns out that it's putting out about 9 volts and change, 9.3 volts, something like that. Um, so it seems very likely, and I have not yet taken one of these to bits. It's quite, li quite nicely constructed, by the way. You'll see that it has a fairly large heat sink in the middle there. Um, it does get pretty warm. But in any case, uh, the fact that the output of this is 9 and a bit volts means that almost certainly each one of these three sets of three is wired in series, and all of the sets of three are wired in parallel directly into this LED drive chip. And the long and the short of that is, and why it matters, is that it means that for a total output current of 300 milliamps, it means that each one of those strings is only getting 300 milliamps on 5, whatever that is. Uh, which is 60 milliamps, uh, and that means that these LEDs would pop instantly if I put them in that TV set. So, TLDR, I am going to have to wait the weeks for these parts to arrive from China, or I'm going to have to pay a heck of a lot more and buy them from a you know, first-tier distributor like DigiKey. And that is where I'm off to right now.